they're so different. They're just different purposes, right? I mean, they used to use beer for currency way back when. If you look at the history of currency, right? Yep. You could drink it or you could use it as currency. They're just, they have diff, they're different. And then it went back to just being drink. Yep. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, and then technology comes out and, and dollar comes out and people start trading, you know, then you had the gold standard and then we got off the gold standard. And so it's, you know, things change, things evolve. And if the Peter Schiff thinks we're going back to the gold standard, he was saying in the next 20 years, he thinks we're going to be going back to the gold standard because basically the US is what took the world off of the gold standard. We were first and we pushed everybody else to do it. And now we just showed that maybe that wasn't the most responsible thing in the world to let the government print as much money. I don't necessarily disagree with that. I think that's a likely scenario, or it's, it's a scenario with a good probability that, um, to go back to that because it's gotten out of control and we've seen the problems from it, right? And somebody's going to solve that problem. Why people are investing in Bitcoin is a sign that it's a problem, right? If you the wanna, if, this if you is wanna, a problem. This is a total speculation based on nothing other than a hunch in the back of my head on what, what's going to happen when this dollar completely crashes is that the U.S. government is going to make their own government blockchain. They're not going to call it a dollar. It's going to start to be used as a dollar and it's going to start gaining value. And it's, they're going to start dumping everything over there, kind of starting new. And they're going to start this whole ride all over again, where it's going to be. Um, but I, I think instead of saying the gold standard, I think they're going to back everything up in a blockchain because that, that way they have control of everything. Like if the government can get you to start using, a, let's imagine there's a United States coin backed by the you know United States mm -hmm. military. Every, that's pretty powerful, right? And then you get everyone moving over to that. And oh yeah, and you can use it just like uh, any money anywhere. Where well, next thing you know, it's not the dollar. So the dollar goes down and down and down and down. We could pay off that $30 trillion debt pretty quick if we run the dollar to the ground and move everything over to dollar blockchain. But yeah, and they it's just true, man. And then, like with currency, it's a lot of about what the people adopt too. I mean, our, it's complicated. I mean, just we see so many different ages of people and stuff in our business and how they operate. I mean, I would say if the whole country was baby boomers for sure, right? Or or even Gen X. But man, I the the some of the younger generations come out to understand this stuff, they're not as trusting in the US currency system as everybody else, right? I mean, it's not or even gold for that matter. Um well the, so all they have to do though, and this is again where I think if they if the government wanted to be sneaky, is just really crack down on that you cannot use cryptocurrency to actually make a purchase. You always have to convert it into a dollar. So if they get you at the exchanges when you're buying and selling and they regulate that, which they can do, that's where they get you, where you're going to have to like, yeah, Bitcoin, oh, you can do whatever you want. As long as you transfer it to dollars and buy it, buy stuff. I think that's where their, that's where their heads are that's at. That's true. And you, and you have to assume that the people will be obedient to that, I guess. But yeah. I, I mean. Well, just imagine turning it into a law that it's a felony if you accept cryptocurrency as a payment. I mean, well, yeah, what if they say, what if they say, yeah, but what if they say like, okay, you know, if you, if like technically if I pay you $300 to do something for me and they say, well, now you have to report that as whatever. And I hand it to you, you might, you might not. Well, exactly. You know, just, I mean, that, and that's always going to happen under the table, construction jobs. What I'm saying is if you go to McDonald's and uh, yeah. McDonald's starts saying, we accept, you know, Bitcoin as a payment, we accept Ethereum as a payment. And the government's like, we're not going to allow any normal company and we're going to make it a, a felony. You're going to always have people for a couple hundred bucks doing side jobs and things. But I, I don't think you're ever going to, maybe that's a fraction of a percent of our economy. Yeah. I just think that is, if the government started making it a felony, if they find out you're doing it, nobody that makes real money wants a felony. Um, that's true. It's like trying to predict the stock market. I mean, if, if you could predict human behavior on a mass scale, everybody would be rich, right? From the stock market. Yeah. <laughs> It's Again, it's all, and who knows, they may not do this, but I just think it'd be a clever way of the government to how do we pay off our debts? How do we pay off um, $30 trillion and going? Who knows where it's going to collapse? 40 trillion with the way we're spending. Um, how do you pay that back with our, with the current GDP? Like how does it's, it's impossible. So well, one thing we know is it won't be pure. There'll be motives behind it and stuff like that. So it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. But we're There's interested a lot of people kind of... who want to hide their money. So crypto is a great place to hide it. And then um, I, I just think that if the government starts to create their own coins, which seems like they're talking about, seems like there's a lot of countries talking about creating their own 
their own blockchains, it actually would be in the long run, probably better for the government. Because like you said, that $300, that's not tracked anywhere. Like, okay, I, you, you know, there's, you see those drug dealers you start looking at my bank account for everything over 600. That makes it a lot more attractive too. And it's not like right now the government and the people have the best relationship. Yeah. But we, you know, uh, Peter Schiff, I mean, his dad, 80 years old, died in prison for not paying a little bit of money in taxes. Like he was like a, like a true like patriot. He was saying that income tax was, uh, uh, Oh no, I get there. Yeah. I'm not saying yeah. you don't pay income tax. I would still report it. Um, just, you know, I'm not saying you wouldn't report it. I'm just saying how would, how would they get like the longer they wait, the, the worst it's going to be. I mean, how many trillions of dollars in market cap are you going to wait for? I mean, it's going to be hard. <laughs> if the if the U.S. government came out tomorrow and had a very easy way for you to buy U.S. dollar coins, I think droves of people in every aspect of life would would invest in that. I mean, even I would buy some if it just launched for exactly what I just said. Not that I trust the U.S. government, but if it's I would see the next logical step is them getting away from the dollar that they totally drove into the ground. And this is the next, the next currency. Um, And, and for them, it works out because they could hit a button and see everything that I've bought every, they don't, they don't have to guess if I made $500 and put $300 on credit cards and $200, I bought things with cash. They don't have to guess anymore. There is no physical currency. They know where every single dollar is and they can track if like, like if I paid you $500 in cash, first, they don't know that I did that. And then they don't know what you're going to do with it. So if you yep. set up like a shell company and you, you try to, you know, move it, well, now they can start to set up algorithms to see, wait a minute, Dan, every yep. dollar you give to the shell corporation ends up in the hands of uh, ISIS somehow within a, a week. I, I you may know or you may not know, right? And it doesn't really matter, but I, yeah, they can track that stuff. And it's, a, it's like, it's scary. Because you don't want to be tracked, but at the same time, it's like, well, you know, if you do, you want it's truth again, it's truth, right? Do you want do you want to pay the, a fair amount of taxes and have the IRS calculate for you, or do you want the IRS to come and bully you and accuse you of things you didn't do? Yep. But not have that access. I don't know which yep. one you want. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and I pay all my taxes. I mean, I I probably overpay, but it's um I for the same thing. I've been audited a few times. I hate it. It sucks. And um, I get audited because I have a bunch of money coming in and like no employees. And so they're like, what in the world is happening here? So um, it, they usually think drugs oh, yeah. and then add in, and I used to fly back and forth to Central and South America all the time. And, you know, <laughs> they, they held several hundred thousand dollars of my money once um, and it disappeared. It went into a black void. I had to get attorneys um, yeah. when I was transferring. I sold a home and you have to Costa Rica sell for cash. When it left the Costa Rican bank and it came to the U.S., it somehow got magically taken and there was no notification. There was no, here's what happened. Here's who took it. Nothing. It never made it here and it, it left there. And then we found out, uh, we got attorneys, we did all this stuff. We found out like a month later that it was uh, intercepted. Well, yeah, sometimes a good paper trail and record can keep you out of trouble. I've seen that a lot of times too, so. Yeah, say. it was just it's just interesting that the government can can do that. And I think with yeah. blockchain, instead of going through banks and everything, it's just gonna be a, a whole new level of it does. Government. There's a lot of clarity and certainty and it's not gray. Yeah. Well, hey, look, we're kind of um I'm sorry I ran over on you, but I, I wanted to also thank you um for all of the help that you've done uh with me. I mean, with the first conversation we had, I kind of came in there with a lot of I think this is what it is. And you took me like over a bridge, like you built a bridge for me from one, one half to the next. And uh, just explaining to me some things that, that I was right on and some things that I wasn't right on, but everything kind of came clear, man. And so I, I thank you for that. Um, mm-hmm. I think other people will get the same thing from you and you have a really good way of explaining something difficult and complex in a way people can understand and make sense of it. Um, so nice. I think your classes would be great. I appreciate it, man. We're, we'll see. I'm working on the videos and getting those done and hopefully, you know, nine out of 10 questions are the same questions. So, um, hopefully I think with the classes. I need to do the videos. I think, I think, uh, it's duty. It's your duty. Always. I mean, <laughs> Hey, if I could help people hit that financial freedom and, uh, I make, uh, I mean, I, I guess, yeah, I could make, I could pay my phone bill every month. 
Uh, well, with you're, the, you're, a, you're a talented educator too. So just, yeah. just so you know, some feedback. Yeah. 